Well, I guess the first thing I have to ask is why Mexico and specifically why Rancho Costa Verde? Well, I worked with a lot of Latin families in the Sacramento area in schools, and I love the, the attention that the parents gave to the children and all the support that they gave. And I really appreciated the, the Mexican culture. And I talked with a lot of the families about where they were from, and a lot of them from Guadalajara or mainland Mexico. Uh, but it, that first piqued my curiosity. And at the time, when we knew we were going to be retiring, we started exploring different places, different countries to live in. We both knew we wanted to strike out on an adventure, try something new, and did a lot of research about other countries. And every one of them came up short for us. They were too far away. They just didn't meet what we needed. And then we found Terry had seen the article in the Sacramento Bee about Rancho Costa Verde. And that started us thinking in that direction. It was an ad that talked about affordable living by the sea with the potential for uh, self-preservation and uh, actually self-sustainability. And all of that sounded great to me. And I knew that the Sea of Cortez was what Jacques Cousteau called the world's aquarium, just how prolific the fish, the birds, the mammals uh, were in the Sea of Cortez. And the fact that we could drive across the border, be back in California in about three hours, was extremely appealing. When you say you can be back in California in three hours, did you find the drive, at least at first, long or tedious? <laughs> the first few times it seemed very long, and now it's second nature. It's just not a big deal. Terry's had a few times. He's gone up, gone shopping, come back, all in one day. So it's not out of the question at all to do it, and it really is close. If you need to get to the States, it's a quick and easy, I don't want to say quick and easy, but it's not like getting on an airplane. The places that we were looking at would have been hours and hours and hours if we had to get back to California. Yeah, days that's... and days and days. And this is fairly simple. And the other part to it is that there's very little traffic. If we see two cars in a row, it's a traffic jam. And so we can cruise along and it's really a very comfortable drive. Did the safety aspect, the purported crime here in Mexico, which I haven't seen, did that come into play at all? The safety, that's the criticism you get from a lot of people. You know, when you say, oh, we're moving to Mexico. Oh, aren't you afraid? You know, there's drug dealers and there's murder and all that. And that really never entered the picture for us. Partially because this community has 24-hour security, it's... It really feels very safe here, actually safer than probably being in the States. And in Baja as a whole, and not just in this community, I feel very safe. And uh, it's not as though we're doing something illegal. And uh, we feel, I'll speak for myself, I feel so <laughs> very welcome. And uh, that um, we are guests in a foreign country but we're guests who are um, taken in. And you actually own this property? We own the property. Uh, this is the Fida Camisa component, which allows to own the land. Although Andy's uh, talking about uh, once we've been here five and a half years, becoming a dual citizen, and then you don't even need a Fida Camisa. camisa. That's after you get your permanent residency, which we got right away when we moved here. Then there's a five and a half year waiting period before you can apply to become a dual citizen. But our children, speaking of safety, when they heard that we were looking into uh, buying property in Baja, they said, don't do it, don't do it. They were concerned. They had heard all the stories, mm -hmm. and uh, which you know, have uh, really turned out to not be at all accurate. And then after we built and they came down and, and visited, 
um, they said, oh, now we understand. Yeah, no hesitation at all on their part now. They're really excited that we're here. They see how happy we are, and it's been good. And there's a thing called affordability. Um, our son was talking to Andy and saying, uh, do you think that Dad ever in his wildest dreams would have thought that he would be living by the sea in a custom-built home? And the answer to that is no. But it's reasonable here. It's not only affordable to buy land and build a home, but the cost of living is so affordable that it gives us discretionary income to do a lot of traveling. What did you folks do before you retired in your workaday world? <laughs> I, well, for many, many years had my own company and was involved in after school enrichment programs and child care centers. And we did just a number of really fun educational programs for kids. I spent the last 10 years of my career at the University of California at Davis in the School of Education. And I was running enrichment programs and international teacher education programs. And I worked in schools almost my entire career. I was mainly a, a counselor and uh, became a community school director, administrator. And the, Andy only gave you part of the story. Neither of us worked just one job at a time. We always had something else that we were doing. Uh, the main something else I was doing was working as a mobile DJ, which uh, the whole family got involved in. And so uh, we put in a lot of hours and um, worked really hard rewarding for the most part and now we get to retire and and enjoy this next chapter do you want for anything down here do you lack anything stress <laughs> stress um we don't want it we're not looking for it we're, i feel we've made just a complete lifestyle change it's just you know we've gone from working you know lots and lots of hours being on the go Oh, lots of friends, lots of social activities to this nice, slow, serene lifestyle where we have, you know, we walk about three hours a day. We have time to do journaling, to do meditation, to do a lot of reading. Um, Last week, we went kayaking three days in a row. And then I took uh, people who had never caught fish out fishing two days in a row and they were amazed at how much they were able to catch. Kept, kept some, released some. A lot of people eat a lot of fish here. There, if you're looking, you know, when we've met different people that have come down to look around here, say, you know, if you're looking for lots and lots of nightlife and lots of fast movement and activity and uh, all of that, this is not the place. You know, it's just not. It's a... You know, it's a drive to get into San Felipe, not not a long drive, but a drive. And there's just, you know, nothing right in our immediate area here for, I'd call it entertainment. But we've just switched gears. And this is what and the many, many, many of the people who are here now are looking for the same thing. They wanted a slower lifestyle. They wanted, uh, I don't know, more in touch with themselves. They're kind of inner workings, and it's just very reflective time, I have found. And it's beautiful. I mean, just, it's a feast for the eyes everywhere you look here, which is also wonderful. Seems like they have a lot of community things to do. Very active clubhouse. Do you folks get involved in that? Very much so. You know, we do a lot of entertaining people for dinner. Um, I try to do a welcome dinner for new people. People that move down here so they can get to, to know other neighbors. Today I had my book club here. We do a New York Times top 10 book books, which has been wonderful. We play pickleball. And a few days ago you organized the pickleball right. round robin. Yeah, we did that. We do a lot of swimming in the pool. The pool is beautiful. Take advantage of the beach. I've reached out to activities outside of just here. There's yoga, there's, I belong to a knitting group. 
I'm on the board of the South Compost Community Center, which hosts monthly activities, dinners. Um, we had an art art studio tour on Saturday we were involved with. So there's plenty of opportunities. There's also volunteer opportunities at the school if people would like to do that. Pl there's plenty of things. And there's also the opportunity, if you've got an interest in something, to just speak up and organize it, you know, and find people that are, want to be participants with you. So you have a lot of neighbors around here. Yes. It's a building community. When we first moved here four years ago, you could count on one hand the number of homes where the people were living here. And uh, it's really been multiplying. And that's kind of exciting to be part of a building community from the ground up, Absolutely. so to speak. It's really fun. You do a lot of fishing. Do you have your own boat? Uh, a couple of them. <laughs> uh, an aluminum boat. A uh, kayak that we don't fish off of, but uh, a lot of paddling around. And recently bought a ponga because that's the boat that most of the Mexicans use for fishing. And it's perfect for this environment. And where do you launch it from? Right here at the beach? Yep, about a quarter mile away. And um, it's something that uh, feels almost like cheating. It's really so easy. And I've only fished for the last 69 years. And the fishing oftentimes in the past was waiting all day for a bite or uh, <laughs> casting and retrieving for my health, uh, not getting any strikes or catching fish now and then. Here in an hour, I average about 10 fish, sometimes many more than that. And again, release more than we keep. We want there to continue to be the prolific fishing. But fishing is just another excuse to be on the water for me. Um, because the water is right here and we can walk to it in four or five minutes, I uh, don't need to always fish. Just most of the time. Do you see a lot of wildlife out there? I hear there's a lot of it out there. <laughs> Andy, how about telling them about the Last couple week, weeks ago? We were, out, we were out on a kayak, and all of a sudden, there must have been 500 birds surrounding us. They were doing, what what do you call it, a feeding frenzy? Mm -hmm. Just diving, 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 and splashing, and huge spouts of water going everywhere. It was just unbelievable, being right in the middle of that. And... We've seen, what, turtles out there, sea lions, the dolphins. dolphins. You've heard the whales a couple weeks ago. It's magnificent. Lots of wild, wildlife out there and around. And finally, would you do anything differently if you had it to do all over again? It would have been nice to have come sooner, but uh, it wasn't really happening that much sooner than we came. I don't know if I would do anything differently. We have, we often say we have no regrets about the decision. You know, we, it was what we wanted to do. We wanted to create a new adventure for this chapter in our lives. And it was a really, I'd say, pretty easy transition here. And we are very, very glad, very glad that we made this decision to be here. We have a home, also a cabin in the mountains east of San Diego, and that's a beautiful area to be. So between looking at the way that uh, life is around us there and the way it is here, we get a tremendous amount of variety. And for me, it's about learning new things. I knew that physically I could do well and have the downhill the uh, curve kind of gradual by taking good care of myself and getting a lot of exercise and activity. But mentally has always been something that I was concerned about getting older, wanting to continue to have new challenges and keep the mind going. And um, moving to a new country and being in a different environment has been really good for keeping that learning curve going.